I burned in my eye hole sockets using lossless scaling, DLSS frame gen, and FSR fluid motion frames so you don't have to. It hurts. This is irreversible. So you have to watch this whole video. Let's talk about it today. In one of my latest videos, I talked about my experience with frame generation and how I thought that lossless scaling in particular was very, very horrible for image quality. Not only image quality, but also input lag. I mean, guys, it's so weird to see lossless scaling being promoted after the outrage DLSS 4 has caused in the community. And maybe it's because it can run on any hardware, but guys, it can't run good on any hardware. And I got some people commenting, you know, try out lossless scaling 3.0. They just had an update. It's a lot better. So I did exactly that the day after I got that comment and I went and loaded up Cyberpunk with path tracing, turned off DLSS frame generation and turned on lossless scaling frame generation. And to my surprise, I could choose times two frames generation, times three, times four, and a custom amount that let me go all the way up to times 20 frame generation. It's absurd. Don't do this at home, kids. So first off, you know, I wanted to get a feel for DLSS frame gen again. I'm running path tracing with DLSS ultra performance and frame generation. And you may be thinking, ultra performance, image quality looks horrible, right? Well, take a look for yourself. I think the image quality looks great. In my la latest video, we zoomed in on the image. We can do that again. And honestly, image quality looks pretty darn good. Um, and this is my preferred way to play Cyberpunk, ultra performance, frame generation. When I'm not recording this game locally, I am getting about 100 FPS. I take about a 15 or 10 FPS dip when I'm recording. So as you can see, looks pretty good, you know, run around playing, I'll, I'll kind of like move in motion here by these cars. This is kind of my testing ground with these cars right here. And I gotta say, I am enjoying playing this game so far with these settings. However, you know, we have to try AMD's hand at this. You know, people only have AMD graphics cards. Not everyone has an Nvidia card and can run DLSS Glory. And I understand that. Pe always you hear the recommendations by the AMD GPU. They're just as good. I mean, FSR is pretty close, guys. Well, So the next thing I did, turned off frame generation and selected FSR 3 upscaling because I, for some reason it wouldn't let me run DLSS upscaling in fluid motion frames. Even though I thought there was a way to do that, correct me in the comments if I did this wrong, but I used FSR upscaling and I also used fluid motion frames. And first thing, the immediately first thing I noticed was the image looked so grainy and so uh, noisy. Like I could see all these little dots everywhere. It looks like a camera that has like low light, like really bad low light performance. Have you ever shined like an old camera in the dark and you just see all these little, I don't know, dots all over the screen, like going in and out. That's what my game looked like. And guys, it did not look good just standing still first off, okay? Next, I tried to move my mouse, and that's when I started getting the barfs, man. <laughs> I was like, like, dang, bro, give me a break. This looks horrible, and it felt horrible too. I felt the input lag go up. It looked like my FPS actually went down, um, like not, not my actual displayed FPS, but like my render resolution FPS went down from DLSS Ultra Performance Frame Gen. And I mean, I guess that's obvious it went down, but it felt horrible. The screen was, uh, I mean, the description of Vaseline on your screen is very accurate for this, guys. Just literally just a blur of lights, blur of cars. I tried moving around, it did not look good. The base image looked horrible. I think FSR did not do this justice at all here. And I think I was only sitting around like 40, 50 FPS down from my 100 I had before. So right off the bat, if you have an AMD graphics card, you are missing out huge on gaming visuals and gaming performance. I'm just gonna say that now. If you have not had a, like a recent, like a, D, like a RTX 4000 GPU and tried it in the latest games compared to an RX 7900 XTX or 
somewhere along those lines of AMD GPU of the 7000 series. I mean, you're missing out straight up. Image quality, performance, you're missing out. Tried it right here, tested it myself, 100% difference. Like, meg if you don't notice this, you're blind. So, got off the AMD settings, and I said, okay, now it's time for lossless scaling. It's updated 3.0. What is this thing gonna do? Is it gonna wow me? And I turned it on first off with Ultra DLSS Ultra Performance. I noticed the image quality looked a lot better just standing still. And that was probably because FSR was ruining the image. DLSS is, is way better in my experience. Like those two, night and day, night and day, guys, not even close. And I can even zoom in on the image between DLSS and FSR. So you can see how night and day it really is. But I turned on um, lossless scaling times two frame gen, turned off DLSS frame gen, but we're on ultra performance. And first thing I noticed is like, okay, it's smooth, like smoother than I thought it would be. The image looks good. If I move my mouse around, just take a look. The image looks good. But guys, the other thing I noticed is the input lag is worse than, than ever before. It's worse than AMD's input lag. It's worse than native uh, DLSS frame gen. It's bad. It's bad. I move my mouse. I can literally like count the milliseconds in my head until it moves. Like not actually, but pretty close. Like I could, I could go take a sip of water. I could go put a hot pocket in the microwave and between the time I move my mouse and it actually moves on screen. Okay, so next thing I thought was, let's bump it up to egg times three. Well, that's when things started to fall apart. My FPS went down. I guess it's like increasing latency to wait for extra frames. I guess that's what it's doing. So I did times three and did not feel good. A lot of ghosting guys, input lag out the wazoo. Same thing with times four. And I did not like it at all. Then I just said, ah, oh, screw it. Let's do times 20. And then my FPS dipped to like 20 FPS for whatever reason. And um, I, it's unplayable. It, it was un, unfreaking playable, guys. Like slideshow. It looked like a slideshow. I don't know how it's doing times 20 FPS. I think it's literally just making up stuff. That, that's what frame gen is. But times 20, this is a non-feature, guys. They, he just put it, they just put times 20 in lossless scaling just to have it in there, to like rub it in. So much people on Twitter, so much people in the comment section comment this. They have no idea what even it's going on. They gotta try DLSS uh, three capable card to understand what frame gen really is. Okay, so my next thought after, you know, trying times three, times four, and then times 20 was, well, what if I combine DLSS frame gen with this uh, lossless scaling frame gen, like times two and then times two, then it would be kind of like I have DLSS four and I'm like, ooh, that's kind of a good idea. Silicon steak, you sly dog. Um, it didn't work though. I, I, I turned it on and then it just made my FPS lower. I don't know why it's doing that. I tried to remove all limits of it syncing with my dis, res, uh, refresh rate on my monitor because I thought that's why it was doing it. I still wasn't getting any good FPS out of it. Um, also, the input lag was really bad. So combining DLSS frame gen and loss of scaling frame gen did not work for me. I thought it would be cool if I had like a base resolution or base FPS of like 100 already, like I was getting and could double that to like 200. That would have been cool, but it just didn't work, guys. Um, also, it just noticeably like largely increased input lag. It was not good. When people say in the comment section, like frame gen increases input lag, I can't play it. This must be what they mean. With DLSS frame gen, it's totally playable still, like totally, like input lag feels better than a console, like when you're playing around 60 FPS and up um, and upscaling that. When you're playing with lossless scaling, it feels like you're playing on, I don't even know, like <laughs> it feels like you're playing like on a hot dog, man. <laughs> I don't know, it's, it's horrible. When you're playing with lossless scaling, the, the input lag is unplayable. It, it's just unplayable with any kind of game in my opinion. It, I just hate it. To try it in a different game to see, you know, maybe it's just Cyberpunk. I loaded up Halo and I had a higher base uh, FPS of like 100 when I was recording uh, max settings 4K and it still wasn't good. Times two mode, it broke the game. Like my game would just stop rendering, but on OBS it would still be moving. So I tried to shoot people while looking at the OBS monitor and I'd be like shooting their after image. Like you can see in this clip, like I'm shooting like to the right of me, but like the way the input lag worked, I would aim on them, but by the time I got to the, where they were at, they weren't there anymore. This is literally what frame gen with lossless scaling will do for you. 
Also, I've tried AMD Fluid Motion frames. Like I tried it here, I've tried it in the past. It just destroys image quality. The latency is a, like a lot worse than DLSS frame gen, but it's a lot better than lossless scaling, but it destroys image quality. It's like, what even, what's even the point? There's only downsides for frame gen for lossless scaling and AMD Fluid Motion frames, especially AMD Fluid Motion frames, there's only downsides because it increases latency and destroys image performance. Lossless scaling, okay increases the smoothness a little bit but the latency is off the charts off the charts guys i wish i had some sort of tester for latency like one of those like um things you click with your mouse and then it like shows on the screen i don't have that but i can tell you guys from personal experience um it if i would have to say like dlss frame gen is here with how noticeable it increases like this is native uh this is frame gen like i can notice increase in latency it's not that much this is fsr and then to the ceiling is lossless scaling. You can't even, it's out of the frame, man. You can't even see it. Like it is off the charts. You may be thinking, what is even the point of paying, playing with frame gen and plat path tracing? Like just play it native, um, you know, upscale a little bit with DLSS and have higher FPS, lower latency. Screw the path tracing. Path tracing makes a big difference, guys. Um, I kind of, you can kind of see in this section with um, DLSS native or DLSS uh, quality with ray tracing so yeah guys i don't really want to hear you guys bringing up lossless scaling anymore every experience i've had with this software is it's garbage it's just garbage um it's a really cool concept don't get me wrong maybe it would be kind of cool for something like interpolating like video i don't even know if we can do that but if i could like turn it on like an anime and make it run at like way higher fps that would be cool but anytime my tv's done that with anime i just don't like the way it looks so who knows um, as far as lossless scaling goes to me, it's dead to me. I, I hate it. Also, FSR fluid motion frames is also dead to me. If I would have to choose one, um, I couldn't. I really couldn't because the input lag of lossless scaling is crippling, straight up crippling. And the FSR fluid motion frames destroys the image in such a way um, that I would never turn it on. I would rather have like half the FPS. and honestly it increases latency anyway so who cares I'd, I'd rather have higher latency and lower fps than have fluid motion frames destroy my image like it did it, it looked horrible guys if you're hitting on frame generation and you've only t tried uh fluid motion frames or lossless scaling hold off on your opinion for a little bit until you try dlss frame generation guys it's on a different level it really is on a different level it's nowhere close to these other solutions, guys, both in image quality and input lag and total feel, just how it looks. Guys, that's just my thoughts. I'm not trying to be an NVIDIA fanboy. I tested these things and I looked at them in an unbiased manner. And I mean, I'll let you be the judge. Look at the images, look at these videos. What do you think? Am I being over picky here? Am I, am, I, I noticed without even putting my face right up to the monitor how bad these other solutions are. And this is just another reason NVIDIA cards are well worth the money. This is why they cost more money, because you get features like this. It's not something that's on the spec sheet on a piece of paper that you're going to get this much percent more image quality. But guys, it's way better. It's in a league of its own. Let's hope the FSR4 and the, um, AMD's next AI-based upscaling technology can match, get somewhere close to NVIDIA in both image quality and latency. But I mean, with what NVIDIA is doing with uh, Reflex 2, I mean, it just seems like they're moving the goalposts so far ahead. And I don't know if uh, AMD can catch up in that regard. So let me know what you think in the comment section down below. This was my experience with frame generation. I almost barfed a few times, so you don't have to. I'll see you in the next video. Silicon State, signing out. Ever review every spec he's on deck from GPUs to CPUs, he knows it all. No question too big, no detail too small. He's got the knowledge, he's got the skill. When he drops his take, the haters stand still. Fanboys can cry, but they can't deny.